Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video if you take a second attempt to try to get this Guilos Piper Cub converted to RC flight and get some better flight performance than the first video. Let's get to it. In my previous video, I took you step by step how to convert this Guilos Piper Cub from its uh, free flight kit to radio control flight. And to be honest, the, the flight didn't fly that good. Um, you'll see in the video, I'll put a card up here for the video. There'll also be a link in the description for this build video. We use a park zone brick that is a combined receiver, electronic speed control, two linear servos. It works out great for control. Just have to keep an idea, uh, an eye on weight and things of that nature. So let's take a look and see uh, what happened on the first flights of this in the previous video. I'll just recap some of those flights. So this is the first flight of the uh, Piper Cub. It, it started out okay, but the minute you put it in a rudder input, it just kind of spun off to one side or the other. It's kind of like walking on ice. I never felt like I was really in any sort of full control of the aircraft. As you can see, the plane just didn't fly consistently. You drop off pretty quickly. Towards the end, we've got one semi-decent flight, but it wasn't anywhere near uh, satisfactory to what it should be. So what I decided to do is come back to the shop, just take a look at everything. Um, a lot of the comments, and I agree, the center of gravity wasn't quite as forward as it should be. So what I did was I added a second bolt under here to uh, put the CG a little bit far, further forward. It does balance completely on the correct CG point. I was pushing a little bit on the um, previous flights just to try to keep it as lightweight as possible. With the addition of this additional weight, <clears throat> the total weight is up to 2.8 ounces, which is pretty close to the limit I like with these park zone motors, but that, that is what it is. Also, some commenters have said that there are warps in the wing. I look very closely at the wing. The, the wings are flat, and I've checked them a second time. The way I check them is really quite easy on this building board, which by the way is a Guilo's building board. I simply um, take it on the side and just lie it flat, and you can see the wing is very flat on the board here as well as on this side. It's it's really quite flat. So I don't think there are any warps on the wings. I did take off the side struts just so I could double check that the wings were um, uh, warp free on that. And I reduce the rudder throw slightly. Sometimes when you have too much rudder it can uh, go into a, a spin uh, like that if it's over controlled. And the other thing that would be nice is when I fly in the parking lot that I fly and I have to do a turn pretty quick to stay in the parking lot for test flights, it's good to go out to the field just to go straight and level as long as possible before you do a turn. But a model like this should be able to turn. So um, let's go ahead and go out to the field and see how it works with this new setup to see how well it flies on the second try. We're out here for the second <coughs> test flight of the Piper Cub and see if we can get it flying a little better this time. As I discussed earlier in the video, what I've done is the wings are absolutely flat. There's no warps, although that really wasn't a problem for the first time. It was slightly tail heavy. If you look closely, I've added two um, bolts to the bottom to make it more in line with the CG that up the weight to 2.8 ounces. I took off the struts just to be able to make sure the wing was absolutely flat. Took out a little bit of the right thrust of the motor. I don't think you'd need it really on these ones. And then I reduced the throw of the rudder. Sometimes too much rudder throw could pitch it over. So we will add the battery, add some power, and see if it'll fly a little bit better at this at this heavier weight. This is the second series of test flights with the CG center of gravity in the proper location. The first couple of flights were not well. It, it seemed to start off okay, but the minute you put in a rudder input, the most gentle rudder input, kind of went into a spiral that I could not seem to recover from. Uh, this is probably one of the best early flights. We still had a few more short ones where to take off. You just touch the rudder and it would just uh, spin on in. So again, you try to be as careful as possible on the rudder, stall out, spin in at this point. Finally, after a couple tries, this one went fairly well. Uh, we started off okay, um, managed to pull off from the turn, climb up, and then it just settled down. It started to fly smoothly at altitude. I could throttle back, slow down, just very gentle turns, and it actually was it's beginning to fly normally. You 
notice that it uh, brushes a tree branch there. I lose control for a little bit, and then I fly at the trees at the other end. So we get the model down, one last flight, and then this was the uh, end of the test results. So we're back from the field for that second flight, and to be honest, we, we did get some a good flight towards the end. We get a couple turns, but the, the model was unpredictable. It was skittish, and I'm really not satisfied with the way that it flew. Um, I really can't tell you why this model doesn't fly as well as the other ones. I varied airspeed. I uh, kept a close eye on, on what we were doing with the rudder for the turns. When it was stable, it felt well, but at any point it could drop off and go into a, to a spin on the ground. And so just to be honest with you, just to, to maintain credibility, I want to show you the, the failures along with the successes. I really don't know what why this model is not flying like the other ones. I built it pretty much the same for incidences and all this stuff, but it just didn't fly well. So lessons learned, sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. That's what I'm gonna take away from this, but I would like to leave you with three examples of Guilo's models. This is my eighth Guilo model that I've made to, to fly with radio control. Three that did perform very well that you may consider. The first one always <clears throat> is the Guilo's Arrow. Uh, this is originally a competition free flight design. It's got a lifting tail. It just has all the right dimensions, polyhedral for a well-flying model. This is probably the best RC Guilos model that I have to fly, and I'll show you clips of these last three models at the end. So the Arrow is always a good one to consider if you're building a Guilos kit. Another model that flew exceptionally well is the Aronka. Now you'll notice the Aronka should just be a twin of the Cub. Why this one flies as well as it did, uh, the, the Cub didn't, I, I don't know. But I'll show you the clip at the end of the Aronka. This is just an excellent flying model. It just literally flew out of my hand. Uh, very stable, very predictable. Um, so this is something for your consideration. And then when you get comfortable building Guilo's models, this is my main premiere project, the uh, Guilo's F6X Hellcat. And again, I've got links to all these build videos in the description. Uh, this goes together very well. I always thought looking at it, it's got great proportions, dimensions for a radio control model. I built the removable hatch. You can see the radio equipment in there. This is uh, flies fairly fast, as you expect with the World War II fighter, but uh, it's just a very predictable, honest model. Again, with aileron controls on this, uh, no rudder, just ele elevators and ailerons. So thank you for watching this video. I'm sorry that I didn't get a success out of the Piper Cub, but sometimes when you build these smaller models, they, they work out. Sometimes they don't. You try to make some adjustments and just sometimes it doesn't work out. So thank you for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you in next videos. This is the Guilo's Arrow Kit. It's designed as a free flight modeler and um, it just absolutely flies well. It's pretty easy to build. It's got good nose and tail moments for balance, uh, the wing, everything is just about right for a well-flying rate of control model airplane, again using the park zone brick. The Guilo's Aronka came out very well. It just literally flew out of my hand. You can see it here, it just behaves perfectly smooth, under control the whole time. Very similar dimensions to the uh, Piper Cub. Uh, this one flies well. The difference between this and the Cub, I wish I could explain, but I can tell you, and through the video, the Aronka did fly just fine.
Finally, when you get advanced in your building and flying skills, do try one of the giant scale series of Guilos. I did the F6F Hellcat. There's a couple others in there, a Stuka, Dauntless Dive Bomber. Uh, these are good sized models. You don't have to use a park zone bricks. Uh, complete description in the video of the build. Regular servos, electronic speed controls, batteries, and so forth. But these models fly well. Uh, they're big enough to um, just see in the sky. Uh, very happy with this uh, Hellcat. Three channels as well. Uh, this time elevator, throttle, and ailerons.